difficult where you suffered trauma and abuse on many occasions yes, um, and that loss hasn't didn't stop after Tim was born because you lost two of your own children since Tim Jr. was born right yes and just Remind the jury of those two children, if you would. Elaine, she died at 29 of cancer. Larry Jr. died 23 in an accident. Yes, ma'am. Um, and you also lost your mother, grandchildren. Yes. Mary, Eli, Natan, Gabe, and Elaine. Yes. And I also lost another grandchild. Yes, ma'am. Elaine's daughter died. Yes. My approach, Your Honor. Ms. Thornsbury, I'm going to show you some photos that have already been introduced into evidence, which would be Defense Exhibit 144, 162, and 164. And then another photograph that has been marked for identification purposes as 324. Just, if you just look at them and just tell me if you recognize those. I do. And are these, are these family yeah. pictures? in reference, Your Honor, to defense, uh, what's been marked for ID is 324, so we would offer that into evidence. Um, 324 is the only one not already in evidence. Yes, sir. No objection. I know you talked to the jury about some other pictures, and we might look at those again, but I think this is one that you um, hadn't seen before. And I'm hoping it. You can just tell us about this photo. That's Elaine holding little Tim on her feet, and that's Larry Jr. in the background. So the Elaine, that that's, you said the daughter that died of cancer. Elaine is deceased, and so is Larry Jr. Okay. And where was this picture taken? It was at my house. Whereabouts? In Palatine, Illinois. Okay. And I'm just hoping that this picture can sort of help you um, tell the jury about your memories of Tim Jr. as a kid, and whether this is the type of scene that he would see around your house when he was that It was. He, he was a very happy little boy. I mean, he had his moments, but for the most part, he was a happy little boy. What did he call you? Call me mom. Mom? Is that after Cynthia left that he started calling you mom? Yes. And you remember the types of things that he like to do with his dad, Tim Sr., the most when he was young? Oh, he loved to I think he was Spider-Man. He would climb the door casing. He would take two chairs and do the splits on the chairs. I mean, he was just, you know, loved to swim, loved to go to the park. 
and loved to dress up and go with his dad. <coughs> be with his dad as much as Oh, yes. What about um, camping trips? Did you all? Stole? We did go camping. He loved to go camping. Where would you go? We would go to Whitewater, Wisconsin. Yes, ma'am. And we would use tents and we would, you know, rent boats and go out on them. And he totally enjoyed it. I'm going to put up on the screen this uh, defense exhibit 144. I think the jury may have seen this one before, but that's who's that? That's Tim Jr. and myself. And that was on a boat in Whitewater, Wisconsin. Where you went camping? Near yes. where you went camping? There's periods of time that Tim Jr. gave you a hard time when he was growing up. He went through his little spells, but you know, that was just being a kid, I thought. What was your uh, communication with him like when he did that stint in prison in Illinois? When he went to prison? Yes, ma'am. I wrote him a letter every day while he was there. I visited him. I talked to him two times a week as much as I could afford. And if I was out of town, I would hurry back to get back to get his call on Sunday. Yes, that was every Sunday and every day a letter. What do you, what would you do when you had written him so much that you, you couldn't think of anything else to say? I started buying cards and just putting little smiley faces on him and I love you and little religious cards and things, you know. Just, you Just so we communicated. I wanted to make sure he got something every day. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I believe the jury's seen these pictures before, but I just wanted to remind them again of these pictures and tell us who's in that picture. That's my husband, all of my great grandbabies and myself. And this was in? That's in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And this is the last time? That it's the last time I saw him. I think that you said that that was, that was the morning that you all left. That's the morning we left. Tell the jury about. I know this is difficult, tonight, but tell them about what it's like to have lost your great grandchildren. It's devastating. I mean, I I can't explain it. I mean, unless you've lost a child or a grandchild, you wouldn't know the feeling. It's an emptiness. It just never goes away. They never leave your mind. Think about them daily. You see little things that just constantly remind you that you had them, but they're not there anymore. It's horrible. It's a part of you that's been taken away that you can't get back. Do you feel things like, uh, like, like guilt? Oh, I, I feel so guilty because I, I just wish there was something I could have done. I wish there was something I could have seen. I mean, I should have tuned into something, but I didn't. And I feel, you know, totally guilty that I wasn't there to help him because he needed help. He was over. He was devastated with taking care of the kids. I seen that when I was in Atlanta. And I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what. He was starting to go home with him that day. I just didn't know what to do. And if 
if you thought that your great-grandbabies were in danger? I would have walked there. Ms. Thornsbury, I, before um, court today, we showed you a, uh, may I approach you? We, um, I'm going to show you this flash drive with the monkey. Defense exhibit for ID purposes is 352, and we showed you that flash drive beforehand with yes. that video on it. Yes. And do you it's a video of my backyard. In order we move to admit defense exhibit 352 and evidence. So your state's objection will be admitted. Permission to publish the city. Tell the jury where this is. In my backyard. Who's that with the American flag? That's my son, Tim Sr., and that's uh, Eli. Jackie, my granddaughter. Okay. And that's senior's stepdaughter, right? Yes. Right? So, uh, daughter of Julie. Yes. I know it's been tough on you and I have Sorry, um, and I'm almost done. I just um, I want the jury to hear from you about the uh, tremendous decision that's put before them. So I want to ask you: Do you want Tim, Tim Jr. Put to death. No, God, no. I love him. Her family's been through enough. God, I just don't think we could take any more. This has broke us so bad. And that I think would just be the final nail in the coffin. I just don't think I could take any more. You still loved him. Oh, God, I love him with all my heart. I don't think when you love someone, it ever goes away. I appreciate you talking to us today. Thank you. 
Thornsbury, the first time that you learned that something was wrong in September, I guess at the end of August, your grandson was supposed to bring the grandchildren for a visit. Yes. And he didn't show. Right. And then I think over the next several days, you began to call and text. Correct. And he just ignored you. Yes. And never answered. And then at some point, you received a phone call from, I believe, the principal or vice principal from Eli, Mira, and the Tom yes. School, saying they hadn't showed up for school. Right. And you told your son, Tim Sr., and then he called the police. Yes. December of 2012, I believe that was the last time except for the aquarium visit. So prior to the aquarium visit, 2012 December was the last time that Tim, your grandson, brought the grandchildren. Is that correct? Correct. And he and his dad got into an argument about the way Tim Jr. was treating the women in the house, isn't that correct? I'm not really sure what it was about. I wasn't there. I just know that he left that night. He grabbed his children up and he drove back to South Carolina and he never came back again. Never came back again. And he never, except for the aquarium visit with you, he never left. <clears throat> Nobody else in the family ever went to South Carolina to see your great grandchildren, did they? No. Not to my knowledge. The Atlanta trip that the supposed to go to the aquarium, you didn't actually go, right? Right. It was a one night visit. One night visit. And you said you could tell that he was stressed out, I think that's how you described. Very much. Um, you offered to take the babies Right, I offered to take the ones that weren't in school home with me until he came in and he said, I can't live without my baby's grandma. And now you're aware that he submitted that he was addicted to spice and was smoking spice up to five times a day during that time. I am aware of that now, yes. Do you have any knowledge that there was a May 2014 DSS report involving the time? No. You didn't have any knowledge of a safety plan that he was not supposed to use any kind of physical punishment? No. You were not aware of the August of 2014 DSS report? No. And his agreement not to use physical punishment? I knew nothing of any of that. In the Atlanta trip, did he use physical punishment on any of your children? He didn't discipline the children then. I mean, they were basically with their grandpa and I. And uh, I just, I knew something was wrong. He didn't look right. He looked all wet, he was sweaty, he was just, you know, he had lost weight since I had seen him. It just something wasn't right, but I didn't know what it was. And he was drinking, which I was not accustomed to him drinking, smoking cigarettes. I wasn't accustomed to that. You had testified before that your grandson, Tim Jr., was selfish. Yes. And you said that was probably because he was an only child and his dad spoiled him. Right. And he was stubborn too, wasn't he? He was kind of bullheaded, yeah. In fact, other than maintaining a relationship with you, he cut off his father after that December of 2012 incident, didn't he? Yes. 
in fact, the only reason that he was coming down for a visit because you told, I believe, Tim Sr. to call and apologize. Is that correct? My husband had them communicate. Your husband did. The two that you talked about. Yes. So your grandson would not have come other than for the fact that you <laughs> planned to come, other than the fact that your son called and apologized. I'm not sure how it went down, but I do know they talked. Did you ever notice whether he was harder on the Tom than the other children? No. Were you aware that Natan wanted to be with Amber? No. Were you aware that Mira wanted to be with Amber? I know when they first split up and everything, Mira had said that, but then after that, Mira said she wasn't leaving her daddy because she was going to help take care of the children. She was a big girl. And the kids did ask me why didn't their mom come to see them. They would go to the place where they were supposed to meet her and she wouldn't show up. And the kids would be very upset and they would talk to me. You have heard that when your grandson killed Eli, that Eli said, Daddy, can I come with you? I've heard that. And we know that Tim was so selfish that he killed Eli. Isn't that true? I know he killed Eli. We know that Mira was begging for her life. No, no, no. And that your grandson was so selfish, he killed her. Isn't that true? Yes. when you got um, the call from the sax guy that the kids hadn't been in school, what did you do? I called my son. I knew something was wrong because even the principal said this is just, it's way out of order. Yes. It's, yeah. And what did you do? What did you and Senior do? We went to Kentucky to my daughter's house where we could be closer in case something happened, we could get there sooner. Were you talking to various people? I talked to everyone. And was, did you, did you know whether Tim Sr. was in contact with law enforcement? Yes, he was. And did he call other people in South Carolina? Yes. And were you all trying to? Desperately to find where they were at. And when you got asked questions by people, did you give him every, all the information that you could? Yes. Since Tim was arrested, you've been asked to cooperate with various people involved in this case, right? Yes. And have you always done that? Yes. And that included talking to, I think, Dr. Frierson, right? Yes. And has anybody in this case asked you to do anything that you've refused to do? No. Has the solicitor's office ever reached out to you as a victim in this case? Who? The solicitor's office, the prosecution, have they ever reached out to no. you? No. Mr. Graham was talking to you about the fact that Tim was using spice, you know that now. I do. And he talked to you about things that Tim did in his life 
You said that you described him as selfish when he was younger. He was selfish. He was an only child. Yes, ma'am. There are people in your family, a number of people in your family, who have suffered from various problems, right? Yes. And that would include people who had really serious problems with drugs and alcohol. Yes. And would that include you at some time? Your Honor, objection. You're almost done. Yes. He specifically asked about these things. Traits. That's something that runs in your family, right? Yes. That's the kind of thing that Tim Jr. was around when he was a young kid. When he was very young, yes. That's the kind of thing that Tim Sr. was around when he was a kid, too, right? Yes. Thank you. Nothing else? Sure, you missed up now. Then y'all, the jury room lunch should be here. It's not here yet, it's here shortly. So don't talk about the case. Step in the jury room. Probably 140 or so before we start back. So we'll have plenty of time. All right.